Hey, what's up guys and good morning. Today is Sunday actually. It's a beautiful Sunday here in Zanzibar in Page. And uh, it's low tide. I'm here at the beach recording this video. And today I want to talk a little bit my personal experience here since I arrived about almost three weeks ago. And here I'm going to share with you my pros and my cons about Zanzibar and uh, the place where I'm staying. Yeah, so I have to tell you that um, I only, I'm only staying in Page. I will not move around so like other people do, you know, they travel the entire island, uh, which is okay, you know, I would actually love to do this as well, but I'm uh, on a budget, you know, uh, I set myself a stricter budget and also uh, it is my trip here is more like a, a personal retreat, you know, and it's not so much about um, tourist attractions and, and snorkeling and, and dolphin watching and uh, kite surfing and all that kind of stuff that other people do. My, the purpose of my trip here is more rather to, uh, yeah, to retreat, you know. And that's why I stay here for one month uh, in one place I'm stationary. But, of course, you know, Page is a, a place which was recommended to me and... Uh, yeah, so what are my pros and cons? So definitely the, the big con uh, for me is the, the freedom which is here, which you have, I have here, I experience here because, um, yeah, there is no um, a corona going on here basically. You know what I'm talking about? I just was looking for a different word, but uh, I couldn't come up with any other word because I don't like this word Corona. I don't like to use it. But here you have uh, a normal life. Yeah, there's no masks, no craziness, no propaganda, nothing. You have like, it's like a, 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 I, I traveled back in time, like to 2019. Everything is completely normal. This is the big plus, the big pro. Um, at least for me and that was also the reason I traveled here yeah I wanted and I needed to escape the drama and the trauma also you know and everything and the, the, and the entire craziness what is going on in other parts of the world especially in Europe and especially in Germany that the situation was completely unbearable for me anymore and I had to escape yeah and I knew of people who came here before and they traveled here and they recommended this place. And this is the big pro. Yeah? You have freedom here. You can live as a human being. You know, nobody bothers you. Nobody tells you what to do or not to do. I can go inside a shop and buy my stuff. I don't need an appointment like in Germany. I don't need a test. All this bollocks. Yeah, I can just follow a very simple lifestyle a lifestyle with dignity you know like we humans deserve and no micromanagement this is what you find here this is what i found here this this is alone is already a big reason to come here if you are after freedom and after dignity and if you want to enjoy your life according to the premise live and let live because this is my personal philosophy live and let live and not interfere in other, people, in other people's business and freedoms and stuff like that. Yeah, the second big pro definitely is the nature. Zanzibar is really an untouched place, uh, at least the place uh, I'm, where I am right now in Paja, but I assume that uh, other places are very similar. Um, before Corona, I assumed that Zanzibar was uh, probably a secret tip already for a uh, few travelers similar like Boracay in the Philippines used to be like 20 years ago. Uh, and it's probably famous with kite surfers. You know, I'm not a kite surfer, but I assume that the kite surfing community knows about Zanzibar. Yeah? So it's probably for kite surfers, it's not so much a secret tip anymore. But I can just assume that. And there's a woman working in the fields. This is, by the way, a very interesting thing to watch. When the low tide is here, then all the women, the local women, going to the seaside and they're collecting uh, stuff and, and things like that. Yeah, so uh, untouched nature, natural beaches, you know. This is how it looked like thousands of years ago, you know. 
and that's what I really love. You know, it's the opposite for place to, to places like Phuket, for example. Like I, I, I was in Phuket only last year, right, right when these lockdowns happened. You can watch these videos. They are still on my channel. You can see I did the documentation how every single day the, they started to lock down this place. And then you can see actually, vid, actually video footage of Phuket Beach, Patong Beach, when it was completely empty, there was no no human being because there was were, were no, were no people allowed anymore, and that was a, a weird and a very, very surreal situation, you know, because everybody knows Phuket and you know how Phuket can be. For me, I didn't like it, you know. I mean, Phuket was just too many people, but that's a different story. But here, you can, if you love untouched nature, if you like space, if you like no people then you come here you come to Paja to Sansibar also but probably it's still kind of low season uh, people say it's the rainy season but during my time it only rained for like for two days and apparently in June the, 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 the sunny season is coming back yeah so that's basically the, regarding the, the beach and the nature, um, the life here is very simple, of course. So Tanzania is a poor country. We don't need to talk about that. What other pros I have. The people definitely... Uh, okay, the people is a double-edged sword, I must say. The pros are definitely that the people are friendly. There is no question. Especially the children. I must say the children are very cute. Um, I, I think with because I don't have children, but you know, uh, with any children, you know, it doesn't matter from what culture or country they come from. They're always cute, they are, um, how to say, um, I, I, I cannot come up with the English word now. Um, yeah, they are kind of, um, ah, what's the English word? Uh, innocent, you know, like, uh, yeah, they're, they're, they're innocent and they're very funny, you know, they're, they're, they're not shy to approach you also, not for begging uh, money or anything, but just to say hi and uh, jumbo, you know, jumbo is the the uh, Swahili word for hello here in uh, Sansibar in Tanzania. So the kids are really, really cute and, um, yeah, they are funny to watch. There are a lot of kids here, which is normal for these kind of uh, cultures, you know. And the women, since it is a uh, Muslim-dominated uh, uh, country, uh, especially in Zanzibar, so you have also, uh, of course, the Muslim tradition, the Muslim religion here in place, and uh, you can see that also. The women, for example, are very, very conservative and traditional. Uh, you see them roaming around, doing stuff, uh, washing clothes, here now at the beach, collecting some fish. I don't know what they're really doing. Uh, but they barely talk to you, you know, they also they don't greet you, you know, sometimes they greet you But uh, I don't know if this is the culture This is the African, African culture thing or maybe it has to do with Muslim But all together overall, it's very conservative, but there's no no issue I have no issues with that because I worked in Muslim countries before I lived in Muslim countries for many years in Malaysia and Indonesia and in the Middle East, so um, The other so let's go to the cons, you know, which I noted down here. So uh, let's start with the people. So, yeah, I said the people are very friendly, which is true. They are polite, uh, but also, um, especially what I've noticed in Stone Town, very pushy people. I'm not talking about the women, I'm talking about the men, the males, you know, because, yeah, uh, they need to sell. Uh, it is a tourist destination and uh, tourists are there uh, to spend money you know that's the business uh, concept and uh, right now it's the low season so there are not many tourists around but there are so many people who want to sell you something boat tours they want to invite you to their restaurants they want to sell you t-shirts souvenirs it's it's uh, really it was so annoying i must say that is the, the big that was the big con on top of, of my list here when i was in stone town these people are so annoying. They are not aggressive. So I, I don't want to say they are aggressive, but you know, you could not leave a house. I couldn't even leave the house and walk 10 feet. And then you get already bothered and approached by people and talked to, you know, every single day. It's like, this must, 
this is like if you are a rock star that that I, I know I know how rock stars f must feel like you know when you cannot just walk 10 feet and everybody wants something from you I mean on the other side I understand that the people also you know it's the only income source here and uh, and they need the money they need to survive of course what would I do if I would be a local and uh, my only business is to sell t-shirts to uh, foreigners to tourists yeah I probably would also approach them and try to sell my t-shirts but I'm just saying you know pros and cons this is the topic of the video I feel it is a little bit too much you know and unlike in Asia for example this is also something and here oh this is stone town so here in Page it is a little bit more relaxed yeah um, here it still happens that people approach you and want to sell you something but it is relatively manageable and here ha you have so much space especially on the beach you know already when somebody is targeting you from far away so you, I just walk a little bit faster or I take a different route you know uh, still it happens but it's, it's, it's much much less than in stone town so and here's one big difference to Asia even the whole and this is also one one pro actually the entire nature the landscape and everything reminds me of um, southeast asia philippines indonesia thailand you know everything looks exactly the same this is what i like the tropical climate the vegetation the palm trees the whole setting is what i really really love and i really really missed during the past year when i couldn't really travel to the places i love in southeast asia so here i found it and but here are different people you know and in Asia you don't have that you know this is really something what I I still could not really find my peace here because yeah you always have to kind of anticipate that somebody is coming from behind and talks to you or wants to sell you something or offering you something it's not in an aggressive way they do it in a polite way but still you know I'm just talking for myself it really but I came here to find peace and loneliness because I'm a loner I am a lone wolf I am a guy who loves solitude a lot and I know many people cannot stand that they say oh my god I I could not even survive being two days alone with myself I go crazy I go nuts no and for other people maybe they liked it but I'm just expressing here my own um, experience and my own um, impression so for me it is annoying okay and in Asia I don't have that you know it doesn't matter where I am in Asia I walk the, down the beach in Thailand or in the Philippines nobody really approaches me yeah maybe the kids they, they wave and say hi but I can do what I want but so that's a big difference and um, yeah what else um, as I said before uh, this is a very un still untouched and uh, let's call it underdeveloped place you know I don't actually want to use the word underdeveloped so what is what is underdeveloped mean anyway what is developed you know do you consider places like Phuket or Phuket or Bali like Seminyak or Kuta do you consider these places developed uh, if this is developed for you then I must say then to hell with these developed places because as you know I know some of everybody is a little bit different and, and some of you they love Phuket and they love Seminyak and Kuta but for many people also it's just too much you know it's just too much uh, commercial uh, tourism you know it's just uh, selling out the island and, and, and you know it's just too much tourists and everything is like it's like like an industry it's like you know b uh, bunkers everywhere like hotel complexes everywhere it's just it's just about the money and this is not what I'm looking for when I'm traveling so and uh, yeah if these if Phuket and Bali is developed then yeah I don't know then here this is underdeveloped but then it, then I love it you know uh, okay but talking about the the less developed things is when you go for example shopping here in this little village is Paja is not a town actually I consider it rather a, a bigger village you know you can check out my other video where I've just uh, walked uh, two three minutes down the road and you can see how it looks like here this is what you get this is what you have there are no big supermarkets you know there is no 7-eleven this is also one big difference uh, because I always compare this to Southeast Asia and you know like places like the Philippines are considered a third world country and I must say there are many many similarities when, when I compare Paja 
Remember, I only stayed here uh, with places in the Philippines. There are many, many similarities, not in terms of, uh, of nature, of course, we talked about it, but also in terms how the people live, you know, what kind of buildings and houses, you know. Uh, uh, there's a lot of poverty, that's what I want to say. But at least in the Philippines, you have places like 7-Eleven, you know, these grocery chains where you can buy your stuff. They're pretty much well equipped. You can find everything and the prices are reasonable. Here you don't, you don't even have that. Here you only have local grocery stores. You have like here in Paris, you have like two or three, they call it supermarkets. It's not really a supermarket. It's, it's rather a mini mart, you know. They are air conditioned. You basically, basically can find all the necessities. I must say the selection is actually quite good. They have a lot of imported items like Nutella, and uh, things you would not expect. So the variety is actually great for tourists, you know, to survive here for like two, three weeks. No question about this. But the main issue I have are the prices. So do not expect um, to uh, get your stuff cheap here. And these people are not stupid. They are pretty smart as well. And like I say, they need to make a buck. They need to make some money. It's their only income source. But in my opinion, they overcharge certain products. And that's, that's, I consider this a rip-off. You know, you don't have this in Asia. Because in Asia, like I said, you have these largest chains like 7-Eleven and Circle K. And they have fixed prices. So if they, char if they charge, I don't know, uh, $2 for uh, uh, some shower gel, then the local Sari Sari store or the local Warung cannot charge uh, $3 because nobody would buy. But here... Um, it is like that uh, because there is no other opportunity to get your stuff but you need this stuff you know you need uh, mosquito repellent you need the other stuff and they know that here the local folks are there they charge for example i can tell you that uh, oh, um, i like to eat oatmeal for breakfast in the morning so they don't have pure oatmeal here but they have kind of a mixed muesli thing and i pay almost like five dollars for 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 this but is it 500 gram? I'm not sure. And or 400 gram. And this is this is this is this is a ripoff. Yeah. And in my country or in European countries, you don't pay that that amount of money. So this is a, the the down downside here. Don't expect that you can save money. Um, I have to pay close attention to what I eat and what I consume in order to stick to my budget. You know. Uh, I don't also know, yeah, and so um, they have to be careful. You have to know this, okay? Don't expect if you come here, you can uh, you can live on a cheap, yeah? If you want to live really, really cheaply, then you just have to eat fruits and local vegetables, which you can buy uh, from the roadside. But, you know, we Western people, we have our standard and we need... And this is also what I noticed here, what I learned about myself. Um, I kind of learned about my own personal limits, and now I finally come to come to peace with that that I am actually yes I'm a Western guy with a Western background I don't love to live in Western countries necessarily but I need my certain standard you know I need a standard I'm living now in a bungalow here which is actually the perfect setting for this kind of environment you know a bungalow near the beach but yeah you know you have a lot of mosquitoes okay you cannot do anything about that that's part of the nature you also have mosquitoes in america or canada or australia i assume and but you have also rats and mouses and mice and stuff like that so i cannot even leave a banana lying around in my room because the rats will the rat will find it pretty quickly i also consume fish oil tablets every single day for health reasons and yeah i had them lying around you know uh, uh, sealed in, in, in a packet of course uh, but the next morning when I wanted to grab my fish oil tablet uh, half of the tablets were, were eaten up by, by rats they're very smart to, to open it up and, and it's, it's amazing <laughs> it's, it's actually it's, it's crazy you know so you have to be very careful so this is the things I don't really like here you know uh, living that kind of bungalow thing I mean I, I knew that I would move into a bungalow and I wanted to give it a try because I traveled so much in my life. I traveled to so many countries and I, uh, I spent more than 10 years in Southeast Asia. I, I lived in the jungle for, for three years yeah, in Malaysia, basically, uh, where I worked. 
So I'm, a, I'm used to all that stuff, you know, to the insects and cockroaches and these little, uh, 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 little reptiles, you know, which are crawling around and, and, and inhabiting your, your apartments. But I never had rats and stuff, you know, so this is the limit then, you know. So I don't feel really comfortable in this bungalow th setting. There are other places here, you know, where they have concrete walls and stuff, uh, but you pay more money. So you can have your standard, you can have your luxury items here, of course, but you have to pay much more money. So this is just a little note on the side. This is also why I came here to test out my personal limits. Do I really want to live in the future like this? Because I thought, you know, yeah, it's no problem living at the bungalow, in a bungalow on the beach side. It's the dream of everybody. No, it's not, believe me, because once you're here, you get adopted very quickly to many things and then little problems show up, you know. This is called in psychology the uh, hedonistic adaptation, you know. The same like with these, with the freedom I talked about in the first, in the beginning of this video. You know, the personal freedom which you enjoy, but you get adopted so quickly that you take it for granted and now the other problems show up, like the rats, like the high prices, you know, your mind, your ego mind starts to find then other things to complain about. So you're never really happy with anything. Another very interesting experience I learned about myself, you know, because if I imagine Zanzibar from a far away distance, I say, oh, this is like paradise. Once you're here, yes, it's like paradise, but you know, you also live here, you have a daily life and you have to manage your life, you have to arrange things and I also work. You know, I take care of my online business here, so I'm not just hanging around at the beach all the time. So I have to manage my life. I have a, I have a routine, I have a, like uh, other people as well, but of course it's a much nicer setting, you know. So these are all these kind of things I learned about myself uh, which I knew to a certain extent already before, but I also wanted really to test myself, you know. But for the future, I know wherever I go next for holiday, I need my, my, I need my standard, you know, and I will be probably a little bit more careful to select my, my next destinations. And I have to make sure there is a certain infrastructure there in terms of uh, shops and ingredients and stuff. I have never tried the street food here honestly because for the first two weeks there was nothing available here all the restaurants are basically closed there were no street food vendors no slowly they're popping up again and they do some grilling and stuff and some other restaurants have opened again because now the, the season the high season high season is coming back slowly and you can also see many more tourists are coming you know like three weeks ago this place was empty but now many, many other tours from all over the places, from Germany, from Switzerland, from I think from Italy, we have people here from Italy now and uh, from other African countries. And so, yeah, people are start to coming back. But I haven't tried the street food yet because I'm afraid, you know, I'm a chef. Uh, I don't mind to eat in Southeast Asia. I was afraid in the beginning also when I, when I came the first time to Asia and 15 years ago, but I'm still a little bit hesitant, you know, because uh, I don't know how they cook here, how they store their items, you know. And yeah, so this is all you have to know, basically. But let, let me check my list here. Um, yeah, so that's basically it. So maybe there are a couple of other things I wanted to mention, but uh, I don't know. I don't want to. I don't want to make this video also too long. But I wanna I wanted to share this experience with you. As I said. Uh, uh, this is my own personal perspective yeah other people might have different pros and cons and yeah, i think for kite surfer this is a great place uh, there's so much space here you can kite surf your i don't know you can kite surf 24 7 basically or you cannot do it because you have tides i was told that here in Paris you have tides up north in Zanzibar. There are no tides, but I don't know if this is suitable for kite surfers. So, yeah, depending on what, what suits you or what preferences you have. Would I recommend to travel here? Absolutely, yes. Two thumbs up. Uh, this, I wanted to come here, I wanted to make this experience. My main motivation was to experience human freedom. That was my main uh, motivation to come here. Because that is the first time in my entire life that I traveled to a sub-Saharan African country. 
and I never been to Africa before. I've been to Egypt a few weeks before, but Egypt is it's a North African country. But this here, Tanzania, is the true Africa, you know. Uh, it cannot get more African, you know. And I wanted to get to know this, I want to make this experience. Uh, but I also learned one thing now. Uh, my heart really beats for Southeast Asia. This is one thing I learned now after coming here. Uh, because I, you know, guys, you guys who follow me for a long time, they know that I spent many years in Asia and Southeast Asia. So, and I always knew this is the place I want, want to be, but I always thought, yeah, no, maybe there are better places than Southeast Asia. Maybe there is a more paradise place. Than, and so this is part of my research now. I traveled here and it's gorgeous, you know, the sea and the ocean, so many good things. But bottom line, when I put everything, everything really together, for me personally, I must say, the nature, no question, perfect, beautiful, like in the Philippines or Indonesia. Uh, but probably it's the, the culture here, the people, you know, don't get me wrong, you know. Um, something is missing, uh, which doesn't really 100% suits me. But overall, it was still a great experience. And that's why I recommend everybody to come here. And uh, maybe, and there are certain, certainly a lot of people who love this place over everything else, which is fine. You know, I say live and let live. You can have your preferences, you can do what you love. But for me, uh, I still want to see uh, Central America though, uh, and South America and Mexico, you know, because they also have a similar uh, landscape, vegetation, and climate. So I want to check these places also out. But I think I came a little bit closer to my own, uh, to my own conclusion in terms of where I want to spend the rest of my life, you know. Definitely it should be a tropical country. And I feel just a little bit more comfortable in Asia. Also because of the culture there. Uh, I don't know how to put this. I don't want to elaborate too much on this also because the video is about Zanzibar, about the pros and cons. I just wanted to give you also a little bit of a context here where I'm coming from, what I'm doing here and why I, why I see the things I see it and why not another way. So you hopefully understand me also a little bit better. Yeah, that's basically it. So. There's nothing more to say at the moment. Um, yeah, if you want to escape the corona madness, come here. I think many people who come here, they are here because they know why they're here for a good reason. I have seen, in the beginning, I have seen one guy, a white guy wearing a mask in a shop, in the Minimart, and the Minimart was empty. There was no, anyway. So since then, that's three weeks ago, all of these other tourists here, they don't wear any masks, so they know why they're here. Nobody can tell me they don't know why they're, why they're here. So you, if, you, if you want this freedom, you come here, you enjoy your life, you enjoy being a human being, you know. You want to go to a restaurant here, you go. Yeah? You sit down, you order your food, nobody bothers you. Nobody asks you about social distancing and shit, you know, nothing. All nonsense. And by the way, I haven't seen any dead people here. I haven't seen any ambulance, any drama, no nothing. There is a normal life here. Just normal human life. People go about their normal daily life, the locals as the tourists, okay? There's no issue, no nothing. It's just normal as it's supposed to be. If you want to experience this, then yes, please come to Zanzibar, come to Tanzania and by coming here, you also help the local people, of course, because, and this is the last thing I want to say, I think this place has great, great potential in the future. If the Tanzanian government is really, really smart, they will push this place not to become like maybe Kuta in Bali or Phuket in Thailand, but yeah, I've seen that in Stonetown. There's a lot of real estate which can be redeveloped, you know, there's a, it's a beautiful old town, a lot of heritage buildings and stuff. It, if they would invite investors, you know, if you, if you are interested in real estate, in, you, you invest in these buildings, renovate them, make them new. I, I, I talked about this in my other previous videos, then it's a great opportunity. And if the Tanzanian government is really smart, then they, together with the help of foreign investors, I'm not talking when I say foreign investors, I'm not talking about big corporations like Apple and these other 
almost criminal organizations. Yeah, I'm talking about private smaller investors who want to run a hotel or a lodge or I don't know what a bed and breakfast, you know, who really coming here to invest to help the local community and the local people. You know, it's going to be a would be a win-win situation. If the government here would support this. I don't, I don't know if they're supporting it already, but then this place has great, great opportunity, especially if they keep the country open and don't make it another Corona prison like so many other countries. Because that's where also people come here, because they discover Tanzania now as a, one of the very few uh, places of freedom left on this planet as it is at the moment. That's the truth. Yeah? And there is not much, there's not much left, not, not much countries left at the moment where you can go and travel and left, left be a, left, to be left alone, yeah? And uh, no wearing masks, no nothing. It's like I said, it's like traveling back in time. So if you like to have, yeah, if you like time traveling, then come here and be part of it. So I don't know how long this video, no, Oh, it's already 30 minutes, so it's... Okay, I'm checking out now. Thanks for watching. Leave me your comments in the comment sections. Tell me, let me know what you think. Have you been to Zanzibar? Yes, when? Uh, how did you like it? Tell, share your pros and cons with me. Maybe you disagree with some of what I said, and please let me know. No problem with that. Maybe you agree with me. Uh, also, maybe you are watching this video because you're not sure, should I tra travel to Zanzibar? Because <clears throat> they say now, there's also Corona and this and that. No, it's not true. Not here in Zanzibar. Here, I guarantee you guys and girls, you have a normal life. And in front of me is the ocean. The tide is rising now. And later, I will go swim. I have my rest, you know. I enjoy my life and nobody bothers me. Nobody wants something from me, basically, you know, in terms of this uh, Corona bullshit. And uh, yeah, if you, if, if, you, if you watch this video and want to come here, also let me know, reach out if you need uh, some information. I may, may, have, may not have covered everything here. Ask me anything. I'm still here. I can uh, help with information about everything, okay? Don't be shy to ask me, please. I'm happy to, ask, uh, to answer any questions you have. So I'm checking out now. You guys, please take care. And yeah, if you have a chance, come and travel here to enjoy life life as a free human being take care guys and see you in the next video bye bye